I have an appointment on Saturday to get my hair blonde. <laughs> You're the first person I have told besides Jim. I did call him and tell him. Um, and a part of me wanted to ask him his permission. But I told him in my text message, I said, I want to call and ask, uh, talk to you about something, but I don't want to ask you permission. I want to talk to you like a friend. And maybe that's what me and Jim need right now, for example, because I've always been so scared of him. And I always feel like I have to make him happy all the time. And if I'm not making him happy, then I feel like he's going to get mad at me. And if he gets mad at me, then I don't want to be around him and I feel triggered and I feel like upset and you know I take it real personal so rather than me looking for his approval looking for his permission looking to make him happy I need to stop all that right I need to speak my truth and be who I am and if he wants to be my friend then friends don't make people feel bad for things friends don't you know that's 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 the basic of all relationships is you need to have respect in all relationships and friends respect each other right so um, question was you might be able to use that same approach is say something like hey I want to talk to you about going to Georgia you know this could be something like a conversation with your dad or your therapist or your mom and you can say but I'm kind of scared to talk to you because I'm afraid I will disappoint you with my thoughts so if you and I can have a conversation where I feel safe opening up to you can you please let me know if you're open to hearing my ideas and when you approach that, whether it be with your dad or with your mom or with your therapist or whoever, because, you know, depending on your um, thoughts on why you're scared to speak your truth, I understand why you are. I'm scared to speak my truth all the time. I've been I've been doing the Kathy mask for as long as I can remember. And if you've got the cloak on, nobody will know your truth. So the way I think we push through our truth is by is by asking people if they're open to having a conversation and you can say it very kindly and you can say it very um, openly and say I have some thoughts and I'm having uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of scared you could say scared or like I said with Jim I want to talk to you about something but I don't want to ask you for your permission I just want to talk to you like a friend and by telling him those things it told him that I needed to have a safe space to speak and he needed to he needed to check him, his self and his attitude before he responded that's that's only fair that he checks his attitude before he responds so he says okay go ahead and call me so I called him just a few minutes ago and I said so I'm thinking about going blonde he's known that for a while and he goes okay go ahead and I'm all that's not what a friend would say and he's like what do you mean and I said you just gave me permission and I didn't ask for permission I told you specifically I don't want permission I told you specifically that I um, wanted to talk to you like a friend and that's not what a friend would say if she said to her friend that she's thinking about going blonde and he's like you're right well I think that's if what you want to do sounds great and I'm all okay that sounds more friend like and so I had to coach him through on how to respond like a friend and not like a husband that's giving me permission or giving me his blessing or something um, with with parents right it's a little different because we do have to ask for permission when we're underage um, for things that have nothing that that is with, with beyond our control. Can I have permission to go to this friend's house for a sleepover? Can I have permission to get my nose pierced or permission to get a tattoo or whatever? Hold on. Okay, so if you're asking for permission for something um, that's unreasonable, they mo most likely will have to say no because it's not in your best interest. But if you're asking for something that isn't unreasonable and something you want to negotiate for, something maybe you want to earn, something you maybe need to have a talk about, maybe there's boundaries or rules or guidelines or things that they want you to follow, it's a back and forth conversation. But we shouldn't be afraid to have that conversation. We shouldn't be afraid to at least start the dialogue. And we can say as a kid under age, hey, I'd like to go to the roller skating rink with my friends on this date and this date from this time to this time and it's going to cost this much money this is what i'd like to do what are your thoughts and if they say well you know last time you went to the skating rink you didn't come home when you were supposed to you didn't call us when you had problems you whatever right then they start to feel like they, they can't trust certain things and you could say oh well yeah i wasn't very good at communicating back then and i've learned a lot from then i promise you i will stay in communication i promise you i'll come home on time whatever you gotta you know whatever you gotta do to acknowledge your 
part on why they're having hesitations with giving you permission and also respecting their decision if they still say no. So I'm not telling you to tell your parents, don't, I don't need your permission. I want you to be my friend. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it is trickier when you are a child, but I'm not Jim's child. I'm Jim's wife. So that my, my situation is just a little bit different. But when it comes to like going to Georgia, for example, you could say, hey, I would like to come to Georgia on one condition. If I'm having a moment where it's really difficult for me to process my feelings in person, I'd like a safe space where I can be alone. Well, you have your room, Chris Lynn, blah, 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 blah. I say, okay, I know I have my room, but does that mean I will have privacy for at least a half an hour before somebody knocks down the door and scaring me or making me feel unsafe again? You know, not knock, you understand what I'm saying, right? Just having that open dialogue of what you need in exchange for your feeling safety. You know what I'm saying? Just maybe write it out. Maybe, maybe put it in a script, like pretending you're creating a movie scene or something. All right, scene opens. Woman goes into the house. Teenage daughter follows. Teenage daughter and woman have not been speaking. It's awkward. Teenage daughter says to mother, I need some space right now to process my feelings. Can I meet back with you for dinner in a half an hour? And then daughter, mother says, that is great. That is fine. But dinner will be ready in 15 minutes. And then daughter says, okay, if I'm ready in 15 minutes, I will be back in 15 minutes. Otherwise, I will see you in a half an hour. And scene closes. Boom. Does it sound simple? Yeah. Is it is it simple? Probably not. But it's an example of how communication and boundary setting and requests can be made and can be said, but it doesn't have to be ugly. It can be kind and honest at the same time. It's a really fine balance. It's a really it's like walking on a tightrope. And walking on the tightrope with a net underneath is what you're looking for. You don't want to try to walk on a tightrope without the net. And what I mean by that, I mean you're not going to Georgia to live. You're not going to Georgia for 100% of the time. You're not going to, to Georgia to walk the tightrope and perform for the circus. You're going to Georgia with a net underneath. You are coming home someday. You are coming back. You are. You do have a, an exit plan already. So it's like practicing on the tightrope. It's going to be scary, but you're going to keep practicing and you're going to take a break and you're going to feel safe for a second and then you're going to go out again and then you're going to feel safe and then you're going to go out a second and then you're going to feel safe and you're going to continue to tell your anxiety that it's not something to be scared of and it's going to be really really healthy for your anxiety because your anxiety will lessen and lessen the more you go on that tightrope with the net underneath so remember your net is here whether it be on marco polo to people that you love and miss and want to talk to um and your tightrope is also knowing that you have a date it, it, you, you do have an exit plan. You do know that you are coming home soon. It's not a for sure performance that you have to do um, all the time, every day. You know, you just, you're just going to practice for a few days, you know, confronting your anxiety, confronting what comes up for you. And it's okay. I think your mom's a great person. Um, I think she's got a lot of trauma that she still needs to heal. And I think her childhood trauma may have been triggered by her marriage to your dad just like my childhood trauma was triggered by my trauma with Jim. My, you know, so my marriage with Jim. So it really, it, 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 it triggers itself in adulthood if you get in a situation that's very similar to your childhood. This is why I really feel it's important that instead of avoiding your childhood traumas, let's try to dig them up and examine them and look at them and just keep practicing communication, open communication, okay? That's my thoughts on it. I don't know what you think. Let me know what you think. Let me know if it was too much. Um, the other thing I was going to mention is oh remember the upside down triangle with the upside down drama triangle and then the other triangle on top picture um, I'll send you after this one but when you come on Marco Polo there's been a couple of times in the past before this last week when you were here before like maybe a month ago two months ago you got on Marco Polo and you were like yeah, I'm having a hard time talking. I don't want to complain. So, okay, well, I'll talk to you later. Bye. It wasn't exactly like that, but you, you basically communicated to me that you felt like you couldn't complain. And I want to tell you my version of what complaining looks like and what constructive communication looks like, okay? If you take a look at the triangle, upside down triangle and the other triangle, um, and you are feeling some things, whatever, whatever you're feeling, there's nothing wrong with what you're feeling. It's your behavior that you have to watch out for. 
there's nothing wrong with your feelings. Just make sure your behavior doesn't put you in a situation where you've got some consequences you don't want to deal with or you're hurting other people, hurting people's feelings, whatever. You want to make sure your feelings stay your feelings and your behaviors. That's different, okay? So anyways, come on Marco Polo at whenever you want and tell me that you've got some feelings and talk to me about the triangles. Tell me where on the triangle you are. So instead of saying, oh, I don't want to complain, say, you know what, Aunt Crystal, I'm feeling like a victim right now. And this is why. And explain to me why you're feeling like a victim. And I'm not going to tell you your feelings are wrong. I'm not going to tell you that you shouldn't feel that way. I'm not going to tell you to get out of the upside down. I'm not going to tell you... I'm not going to tell you to fix it. I'm not going to tell you somebody else needs to fix it. I'm not going to tell you those things. Okay. What I will try to do is try to help. I'll try to, I'll try to validate where you're coming from, you know, but I will try to just talk with you about whatever, whatever we need to talk about at the time. Okay. That way, you know, there's a safe place to communicate what's going on for you and you have a safe place to get you out of the upside down if that's where you're trying to get to. If you're trying to come out of the upside down and have a healthy, you know, relationship with someone or have a healthy communication with someone or have a healthy balanced something, you know, you want to get back on the bicycle, let me know. And if you don't want to and you just want to be a victim for that moment, say, Crystal, I know I'm a victim right now. I don't want to be fixed or I don't want to, I don't want to go to the upside just yet. So I just want to, I just want to talk right now and I'll just get it off my chest and I'll come back when I'm feeling better. That's okay too. I don't want you to feel like you can't complain. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with complaining as long as you know where you're at on those triangles. If you feel like, oh, I got a challenge right now. This challenge is really stumping me. I don't know what to do. Oh my gosh. It, it sounds like a complaint to other people, but to me, I'm calling it a challenge. It's not the end of the world. I'm calling it a challenge because I'm going to come up with ideas on how to improve on the challenges. There's nothing wrong with challenges. So I think, I, th I think, I think I'm making sense on what I'm saying. So just if you ever feel like you want to talk, you can either be the persecutor, the victim, the rescuer. You feel like you got to rescue somebody from feeling a certain way. You know, maybe you can say it's a challenge or, you know what, Crystal, I'm feeling awesome today. And you know what? I, I really could use a life coach right now or something. You know, I just need someone to help me through life like a coach does with a football game. Am I making any sense? Whatever you feel like you need to say, you're welcome to say it here. Okay, this is a safe place for you. And if you're bored and you're lonely and whatnot, that's great. But try to challenge yourself with just being alone with your thoughts. Journal whatever comes up for you. Nothing's bad. Nothing's good. Nothing's Nothing's, it's, nothing has a, a judgment to it. Journaling freely is your journaling just to get it out. Sometimes the anger and sadness and fear in our head wants a chance to speak. And if we don't allow them a chance to be in the control wheel sometimes and get it out on paper at least, then joy tries to be really bossy. And then we start putting our masks and cloaks on and we start pretending to be somebody we're not. And we shove everybody in the circle of sadness and say, you stay there. You're not allowed to come out. Mm. You understand what I'm saying. I feel like I'm I feel like I'm all over the place, but I think you understand what I'm saying. All right. So anyways, I'll talk to you later. This poor lady's been holding for three minutes, so I gotta go talk. I gotta go talk. I gotta go take her call and talk to her. Love you. Talk to you later. Hi, Grislin. I just um I just watched a Marco Polo. I didn't see it yesterday. I was busy busy yesterday. Um I've got lots of things to talk about. I don't have a lot of time to talk though. I got a 10 o'clock meeting and that's technically in five and a half minutes. Uh, I like your idea about doing blonde. I mean, doing a video about me becoming blonde because um, that's going to be a really awesome video, like a transformation video. Like, hi everybody, just like you were saying, I really like that idea, so I'll definitely have to do that. I just can't imagine going blonde. Like to me, when something is hard for me to imagine, it's almost like this gut feeling that I know it's not going to happen. Like, I just can't see it happening. So like, I'm like, oh, watch, I'm going to back out or oh, watch, something's going to happen. Or, oh, watch, this is not going to be the way it's supposed to be. It's going to be so weird. And then I was looking at the picture that you drew for me. I put it up there for right now on my door. Um, the picture that you drew for me, you had these bangs off to the side. Like, like I do, I do have that, but I'm thinking about getting them shorter with the blonde. <laughs> yes, so I'm excited as well. This is going to be an interesting change. Um, you are very right about being yourself and wearing a midriff um, shirt is if that's part of who your personality is. I understand 
why you want to be yourself and wear it. Now, if you were a little bit older and you had like big boobs and a cute butt, like your, your butt's probably cute right now, but I'm saying like, if you were like 16, 15, 16 years old, I'd be like, mm, no, not my daughter. Sorry. And I'm not saying um, that you're not, you don't have a right to express yourself with your clothing choices. But as a parental figure, Ashley and your dad and Yvette are probably thinking like, yeah, it doesn't look like you're trying to attract boys. It looks like you're just a 13 year old having fun with, with clothes and grandma Mary supports that sort of thing. She's always supported me on doing that as well. But when you start to get really developed and like really like curvy and, um, it can start to look a little promiscuous. And what, what I mean by that is boys are going to start wanting you for the wrong reasons, wanting to look at you for the wrong reasons, wanting to talk to you for the wrong reasons, wanting to hang out with you for the wrong reasons. So dressing modestly will let you know that the boys are talking to you because of your mind and because of your heart and because of your soul, not because of what you're wearing. So it's not bad that they are double checking your, your clothing. Hold on. It's not bad that they're double checking your clothing. That's actually a sign of good parenting. Okay. So what I would do in that situation, if I was to go back and be a teenager again and not just shut up and be quiet because they're controlling my clothing, I would actually like get their input about clothing and say stuff like, I'm thinking about buying this shirt or I like this shirt, but is it showing too much? Or what do you think? Because they're not trying to control you as much as they're trying to just guide you to be a modest girl that is going to be loved for her mind, not her, not what her body looks like. And I'm, and I'm not saying that you can't have fun with clothing and being proud of your body, but everybody in the world would agree that boys, it, it sends the wrong message to boys when you don't, if you're wearing a, a midriff shirt or too short of shorts or a really low cut shirt and you're showing off the tatas, you know, it, it's, 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 it's really saying, Hey guys, how are you? And if that's kind of the message you're going for, then that's kind of the guys you're going to get. But I don't think you're going to want that in your life because if you get, it, it'll make you feel more empty than having a guy like you for your mind and your heart and your video game playing and your arts and your skills and your piano talent and all that stuff like you don't need a guy to like you for your tatas okay so i'm not teaching you i'm not telling i'm not trying to control you or anything i'm trying to teach you about modesty and and how it's just better to to have fun with it but don't yeah but just to keep that in the back of your mind and that's all that Ashley was doing. I don't think she was trying to control you. But she does have a way of making it sound like... Like your choice isn't good enough. Maybe that's what it feels like. Um, and then I like what you said also about sometimes we're just in, in our head too much. And if we're in our head too much... Um, then we don't have a, a, an opportunity to enjoy things around us. Alexa, stop. <laughs> If we don't have an opportunity to enjoy things around us, then, and we're in our head too much, then yeah, it, it, it can get really dangerous to be in there too long. And then if um, you can learn to tap in inward when you're in your head, but then balance it out, the bicycle in your head, so when you're in, it's balanced in there, then anything you put outwardly to others or to, you know, out loud, it, it comes out balanced as well. So that's just a couple of thoughts that I had about that. We can talk about that more. But it's 10 o'clock now, so I got to go to my meeting. So I'll talk to you later. Love you, bye.